Has your city's tech community reached silicon status? Many cities in the U.S. are investing in technology to further their economic growth and spur innovation. Here to share some insight into Silicon cities around the country is Brian Heck. He's a serial entrepreneur for nearly 20 years, a veteran of multiple startups, and advisor to many digital companies, including our own. So it used to be that Route 128 in Boston or Highway 101 in California, Silicon Valley, those were kind of the bedrocks of where technology innovation happened. Where is it spreading around the country? Well, you know, there's a lot of cities and practically every state wants to be the silicon this or the silicon that, but there are a few places that it's really emerging as a success. One of them that I'm really excited about is in the Salt Lake City area and uh, they go by silicon slopes which is an obvious play on the ski slopes nearby. They have 7,000 startup and tech companies there now, and um, which is a, a really big wow. number. And it wasn't always that way. About 10 years ago, the state of Utah realized that they were lagging behind a little bit. So they invested $100 million in a plan to recruit uh, academic research talent. And of course, when people are inventing new things in universities, that trickles down. They help them turn them into companies. And that's what's really fueled this boom now. Okay, and then you're also saying that Silicon Beach in L.A. Yes. I, mean, I think of beach, I think of Muscle Beach in Venice, but there's startups there now, too? Absolutely. I mean, that beautiful stretch between Santa Monica and Venice Beach uh, is really home to a lot of startups. And as you would expect, being in the, in the L.A. area, a lot of them have to do with the entertainment business, with the movie business. Um, you have companies like uh, Hulu, which is the video streaming, uh, Maker Studios, which uh, controls channels on YouTube, and even uh, Beats by Dr. Dre, the headphone company that was recently acquired by Apple, is in the greater area. Okay, and I know Justin Timberlake owns a small empire that he's trying to build of, off the remnants off the uh, MySpace, my right? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, uh, shifting up the coast a little bit, Silicon Forest in Portland, Silicon Oregon. Silicon Forest is Portland, Oregon. And, and, of course, you think of Portland as funky hipsters and environmentalism, but actually it goes a lot farther back than that. There's a, there's a history of deep technology, Tektronix and other semiconductor companies going all the way back to the 1940s. And, you know, that's now been updated and you're getting more media companies. And a good example of a, a software startup it's a company called Critical Path in downtown Portland. They were acquired by eBay, and they were a relatively small company. But when eBay bought them, instead of shutting them down or rolling them up or moving them to the main headquarters, eBay doubled down. They doubled the company, and they brought some of their core op operations into Portland as well. So they're really doubling down and making an investment there. So what is it that's necessary? Is it investment in the academic infrastructure? Is it to try to get some sort of a startup accelerator or incubator that encourages small businesses? What, what creates that ecosystem? system where a city can have a tech base like this. I think those are all structural things that you need, but even more important that, than that is you need to define the culture and, and something distinct about the geography. If you go back and think about Salt Lake City, Silicon Slopes, I mean, there's a company there, Skull Candy, that makes really cool uh, headphones for snowboarding and skateboarding and things like that. It's really built into their culture, so they attract that kind of talent. They give their new employees uh, free passes to uh, ski resorts and so forth. So you think about what makes it distinctive. That company probably wouldn't be founded in New York City. City. Or you take a, a company in New York City like Warby Parker that makes eyeglasses, they probably wouldn't be founded in, uh, in the shadows of a ski resort. So really focus on what's distinctive about the geography, and then you will attract the kind of talent that really resonates with that, and then it's in their DNA, and that's a virtuous cycle that helps the company grow. It's kind of simple sounding. I mean, focus on what you know and, and what you already do well, right? That's right. Play to your strengths. Exactly. And, uh, you know, hiring good talent is the number one challenge for an entrepreneur. It's certainly for mine. But when you're in a smaller city, uh, you have a real base of talent there who maybe aren't in competition with the really big guys uh, to go get six-figure engineering jobs. And so it's not just that you get them on the cheap, but you get people who are really committed to the community and likewise venture capitalists who want to make an investment in the community. And that helps everybody. All right, Brian Heck, thanks so much. Thank you.